Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for tuning in. Um, today, we are going to be working on this big planter. So, beautiful wood design, um, ultimately nice and solid, but there's a couple of issues. Here's other pieces to it. <laughs> so, this piece goes on this leg down here. Oops, this way. So got the nails attached, so I'm trying to be careful. So it goes on down here. This piece goes on over here. We're missing the two on the other sides, which will be okay. And there is water damage in here. So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna get these, before we can do anything else, we really have to get these pieces attached and fixed up. So I am going to reattach these to the piece and, and add in some additional nails. So I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue and a couple of more nails to be able to reattach them into place. And really, that's all it's gonna take for those. Nothing, nothing fancy. The little bit of water damage here, I am going to, oh, I just put that down, that's a little heavy. Um, I am going to sand down so that I make it a little smoother. I will use some wood filler if I need to. Um, so if I need to add some wood fill, I will just to smooth it out. And then I'm going to seal all of that, all that section there with, um, I have some spar um, boat finish. So I'm going to use, just use like an outdoor poly. I just want to seal all that wood up so that um, if there's any leakage, it's not going to cause the wood to buckle up anymore. I'm not necessarily going to use um, the spar for it. Well, I may. I may anyway. But it's really shiny. <laughs> so that's not my thing. I don't like it really shiny. So I'll have to play with that once we get it all painted out. But uh, before I can start any of the painting, I need to do some of the repairs. And I will say this, this has been in my shop for a while, sitting off to the side. I would love to say that I haven't gotten around to it only because of the repairs, but that would be a lie. You know what's holding me back? I really don't wanna have to paint these. <laughs> They're just kind of a pain because you gotta go on both sides. It's just a pain. So I finally decided to suck it up and just do it. It can't sit in my in my shop more. Like that's just crazy. That's just that's just me being lazy. So I've decided I've procrastinated enough. Now is the time. So I'm going to go get these glued and nailed on and then I'll see what's what about that. I'll do a little sanding and then I'll see. I'm hoping that the wood is still in good enough shape below um, the, the level. I, I don't know till I start sanding. So I'll come back and let you know how that's going. You can see on our little, little stand that I have reattached the wood parts. I added some extra nails for stability and I have sanded, I mean, I've done the wood fill into all of the different cracks and holes as I had kind of sanded down some of the wear. So the next step is just to get this all sanded smooth um, before we start adding some paint. So I'm going to get that done because it's noisy and dirty. I'm going to sand it, wipe it all down, and then we'll come back for the painting part. All right, we're now ready to start adding paint. Whoops, one little sanding spot I missed. Just that little under edge. Okay, so we're now ready to add, add paint to this. And I tell you, this isn't an exciting finish. Um, I'm going to paint it beadboard. I'm going to paint it white. Um, and we'll do some distressing. It's going to have some great lines to do some distressing and do some age. But really, for something like this, it doesn't need a super fancy 
finish. People are going to want to put this into a sunroom, maybe into a corner in their cottage. They're going to want to put plants in it. Um, so it becomes a holder for the decorative item. If you go too wild and crazy with these, very often you might not end up selling them. And in this case, I'd rather it sold. <laughs> so I do have a small brush to be able to do some of the slots and I have um, a great zipper brush uh, to be able to do the rest. I like to start by painting the underside first. It just kind of makes my life easier. Um, and so I'm gonna get probably two, possibly three coats. Now, this is a dark wood. I'm painting white. I did not prime it. I am using my first coat to see whether or not I need a primer. So, um, because possibly I might need three coats of white anyway, I'm electing to paint my first coat white, see if I get any yellowing spots, if I get any bleed through. If I do, then I will paint a white primer coat that has a stain blocker in it, so White Salvation Solution by DIY, and then I'll paint my third coat of white. So I'm not changing out the number of coats that I need to do, um, but if I end up getting away with just two coats because two coats of white is fine and it's all done, then I've saved myself a step. So it's a bit of a cheat. <laughs> and I just like to point them out to you when, when I actually do them for something like this because it's not, you know, an, an heirloom. I mean, it's going to hold a plant for heaven's sake. So I'm saving myself some work in case I don't need to do the stain blocking um, step. The other thing that I will mention about sandpaper, um, because I did have, I, I thought of it as I was sanding um, this piece down, I did have a customer asking me about it. Don't, don't buy the dollar store sandpaper. Now, I love the dollar store. I buy a lot of stuff from the dollar store. You see me use a lot of stuff from the dollar store. But there are certain places that it doesn't make sense to skimp or to try and save money. Sandpaper is one of them. If you are using the dollar store sandpaper, the sand that's on it is gonna fall away very fast and the paper is gonna break apart. So you're gonna end up with all these tiny little pieces. It is not going to be worth your time or your effort. You're gonna be working way harder than if you just bought a decent sandpaper from the hardware store. And again, I'm not gonna care about brands so much as buy one from the hardware store. <laughs> It will be easier in the long run and the money that you're trying to save is not worth the extra time and aggravation. You're gonna go through an entire pack of the dollar store sandpaper on one piece versus half a piece of the hardware store on an item like this. Like here, I just used a quarter of a piece. That's it for those little spots. If I was using a dollar store paper, I would have used at least one, one and a half, two sheets because it just would have been falling apart and it just wouldn't work. So I'm a firm believer in use what you got. I mean, if you've got it, use it up, but just don't invest in it again. It's not gonna worth, be worth your money. Um, you can save money in your refinishing in other places. That's just not one of them. Now that a piece has all the paint coats on it that it's gonna get, it's time to start sanding. And for this, I wanted to do a fairly heavy distressing. So I'm using um, a 220 grit sandpaper so that I have a little bit better control. And I am going to sand down the edges, but also just even in the flats, knock down just the little rough bumps that happen on any paint to create more of a smooth texture. This isn't a piece that lends itself to any of my electric sanders. It all has to be done by hand to be able to get in between. And I usually find it easiest to just take an old ratty sanding block and wrap the sandpaper around it to be able to do that. But before I do any of the finishing, um, 
I need to get it all sanded and why I don't think ahead and I wear black on the days I am going to sand white, I don't know, but it's poor planning. <laughs> I have it sanded and dusted. So you wanna get rid of all that extra dust beforehand. And now it's time to wax it. So I have clear wax from DIY and just a chip brush. And I am going to apply the wax and then I have a clean rag. So I'll use the rag afterward to just wipe it down make sure that i've evened out all of the wax and um, take off all of the excess and then i will let it dry overnight and then i will buff it out now usually i use an electric buffer this is all going to be hand buffed <laughs> um but it's really not a problem for buffing i will do this and I will do the same thing between each spindle. So that'll make it easy to buff. I will go from the inside out and I'll go from the outside in to be able to get all of the spindles. You can also do it like this, just to be able to buff it, um, whatever works best. And, uh, and this one is done. And I'm gonna come back to you and talk a little bit about um, with pieces like this, some of the things that I consider when I'm picking them up and determining whether they're worth it. Now, I thought I'd just pop on to, to show these spindles, they're kind of awkward to be able to do with the brush. So I dip my cloth into my wax and then I use my fingers. So I'm gonna go three-sided on the outside and then I'll come around and I'll do the inside but it's so much faster and easier to be able to, to do that than it is to try and kind of manipulate your brush to be able to get in there to be able to do that. This has had overnight to dry and I have now to do my buffing. And the buffing just really kind of smooths out that wax and gives it a nice light sheen. The more you buff it, the shinier it can get. And so that's really just a personal choice and probably is something that you're going to do piece by piece, right? Depending upon what you're after for it. Now, a couple things that I wanted to just sort of roughly give you an idea. If you are doing, if you're making over a piece for yourself, um, then you don't really care about any of these points because you're making it over because you love it and you're making it over in a style that's going to work with your home and with your decor. If you are a maker, if you have a booth, if you have a shop, then you are going to be making things over in a style that works for your customer base. When you come across a piece like this one that needed some repair, you need to consider how big the repair is going to be are there any additional costs associated with that? Your time is always a cost. And add that on to the cost of the piece. If you're already looking at, well, with materials and then with painting, etc., how much is it going to ultimately be able to sell for and is it worth your time? So for something like this, you know the painting is going to be a little bit picky, right? So you know you're going to be spending a little bit more time on it by virtue of that how much time are the repairs going to cost the repairs on this were very minimal if all of this was shaky and i was having to uh, re-glue all the different spindles and then do the other repairs um, we're probably getting into a price point where i might not want to bother now i may still purchase it but maybe i'm buying it for the pieces meaning oh this is a great base Right, and I can use this base with a different tabletop. I could use the disc for something, the spindles for something, this round top. I could do maybe a cool wreath of some kind. So sometimes you end up buying these and really you're just buying them for the pieces because they're too much work. It's gonna to take too much time and it's gonna price you out of the market. So for something like this, I didn't do a really fancy dancy finish on it, Partly because the white will sell um, and partly because 
it was already going to take a fair bit of time. Doing a finish that requires multiple coats of paint requires more paint, but it also requires more time. And I wouldn't be making any of my money back on this piece. So as it is, it's not a piece I'm going to be able to charge tons for. So always be really cautious when you're looking at some of the decision making when you're thrifting something. Because sometimes even free items can get super expensive for you if you're looking for resale. Hope that gives you an idea of some of the things to think about. Um, hope you like the, the, the redo on this. Pretty simple, but sometimes simple is all that it takes. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.